everyone. So Lennon is officially five weeks old. We made it. You did it. We've kept you alive for over a month. Are you proud of us? Well, I'm proud of you for hanging in there. This is my life now with a newborn. And I gotta say, life feels so, so different despite me doing the same thing roughly every single day. I'm very excited because tomorrow my mom is gonna come out and help for a couple of weeks and stay with us. I am so, so grateful that she's coming because I could definitely use a little bit more sleep, couldn't I? Do baby's fingernails grow so freaking fast? I know. Lennon is finally napping, so I'm gonna prepare a meal for Ben and me. Honestly, I don't even know what to consider this because it's like 3.30 right now, so is it lunch or is it early dinner? But either way, I am so happy that HelloFresh is stocked in my fridge. They have been longtime partners of mine and they are sponsoring today's video. HelloFresh is incredible because it really saves time. So I'm so glad that I have a service like this so I don't have to worry about going to the grocery store or figuring out what I wanna cook. So today I'll be preparing the sweet corn and green pepper chowder. They have so many recipes to choose from each week and they're always mixing things up. I've had HelloFresh for two years now and I love that they're always creating new meals to get you out of your recipe rut. Everything is pre-portioned, so there's less prep and less wasted food. Sometimes I like going into my plan and increasing my HelloFresh box servings, so that way I can bulk cook and use the leftovers for the next day. They're also offering a seasonal selection of savory sides and autumn-themed desserts like soups and more. Right now, you guys can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 14 genm to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. I'll leave that in the description box, so pop that open. He woke up from his nap. He wants to be a part of this. He just wants some chowder. He does. You know? Wow, I haven't wow. had like corn chowder before like this. M me neither. <laughs> I'm excited. Me too. I love chowder and I love corn, mm -hmm. so. Cheers. The baby food. Mmm. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh, so much flavor. This reminds me of like a good winter soup, mm. you know? It's like on a cold winter day, you'd have this chowder. Yeah. I feel like Lennon's gonna be able to eat this food soon. Like a puree. Yeah. Yeah, you want some? Let's try it. Let's begin the day together. I know that you have some general plans for the day. And you know what some of the experiences will be, but not all of them. Most mornings this week, I've been listening to This Morning Meditation by this incredible woman, Louise Hay. Like there's something about her voice that just feels like medicine for my soul. Like it just slips down and immediately I feel like every part of my body is healed. And it's just the warmth in her voice. It's the things that she's saying. And these positive words are just especially healing during this time. I knew going into postpartum that it was going to be challenging for me emotionally. And um, yeah, it has. It hasn't been a walk in the park. The thing that I struggle with the most is this voice in the back of my head that just loves to fantasize all these terrible things that are about to happen. And I think before I got pregnant, that voice was still there, but it was easy for me to quiet it because I had the time to do my self-care ritual. Like I was able to go on my hour walk. I was able to do my meditations and my journaling and you know keep my environment extremely clean. But once you know Lennon got here, my time is just really, really shortened. I have to really make things count. One thing that I realized that I really have to be consistent with is meditation and hearing these really 
positive affirmations in my day because it really, really sets me up for success and just makes me a more present and calm mother to Lennon. She's got so many meditations, especially on YouTube, and I've just been listening to her affirmations in my AirPods if I'm doing chores, if I'm washing up, because like your thoughts do create your reality and if you are only spewing out negative thoughts and doubts and worries and just leaning into the fear then of course your day is going to spiral into that vortex of negativity and honestly that's where i've that's where I'd been going a lot of my days, especially postpartum. That fearful voice in my head just got louder and louder, but I'm really, really trying to change that. And it has been helping. Uh, I've been doing it pretty consistently for a week now, and uh, I love it. And I especially love this morning meditation. Ooh, just like the background. I think it's just the combination of everything. That like old school, dreamy, nostalgic piano, and then Louise's reassuring voice that everything's gonna be okay. Like I genuinely get tingles when I listen to it. So yeah, if anyone is struggling with some dark thoughts or is going through it, try listening to this meditation. I will leave it in the description box because I swear, I think this is just a good resource for anyone. So in addition to feeding Lennon every three hours, I also pump every three hours. Uh, Lennon and I have been having just a, just a different relationship with breastfeeding. I'm not sure if other moms have gone through this, but basically Lennon now latches perfectly. He just attaches straight to the nipple, clamps on. It feels comfortable for me, great for him. And he will eat like maybe 10, 10 minutes, maybe even like 15 minutes if he's like comfort nursing. But after then, he he just de-latches and then you'll just like be over it. And no matter how much I try to get him back on the boob in different positions, he's just over it. So instead of me trying to force something, I will just pump afterwards. This is a system that is working for us currently. So right now I am like combination feeding, which means that I have my milk and then I also have formula and we just combine them together. I've tried my best to exclusively breastfeed, but this isn't really in the cards for me and Lennon at the moment. Maybe eventually we'll get there, but um, for now, pumping has really been great, especially because I can see how much, how many ounces I'm making and how much he's actually eating. So yeah, this is the current situation. Oh my god, my first outing as a mother. Is it really? Yeah. She went to Chinatown in Oakland and got me this gorgeous ox pendant necklace. I'm matching you now. Which one am I wearing? Am I wearing your horsey? No, I'm wearing my, my tiger. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. The, oh. the, the length is good, right? It's so good, it hits like right at the decolletage. Cause I so got lovely. you the shorter one than mine. Cause I thought you like you'd like it a little bit shorter, right? Yeah, I love it. Thanks, Graham. Love you. Love you. Okay. So I tried wait, to see it. Wait, wait, you got it? You got it? Well look how they cut it. They cut it like through the middle. Wow, one bite. <laughs> I'm back from lunch and you guys have no idea how much I needed that. Not even I knew how much I needed that. Just going outside, seeing the sun, talking to a friend, and just kind of forgetting the identity of mom for a second was actually extremely refreshing. Last night I was looking at old photos on my phone and even like pictures from 2019 feel like an eternity ago. Like who I was then and what my priorities were and what brought me joy are just so completely different to what I feel now. Suddenly like this wave of homesickness just rushed to me. But instead of missing a place, I was kind of missing who I once was and how carefree that life was. And yeah, I think I'm just feeling that way because my identity is going through a period of growing pains. I am a new person and there is no going back. And that's fine. I think it's just gonna take me some time to just feel more comfortable in this role. Like it's still extremely fresh. I genuinely wonder like what I'll be like a year from now. It's so wild because just like London's changing week by week, I know that I am radically changing week by week. 
So yeah, I'm just trying to be patient with myself and being okay with the fact that things are just different and I, I can't like push myself as hard with work especially like it's so hard to get in the zone like even finding pockets to vlog is quite challenging i'm actually really really grateful that my mom is here because now we have um three people on shifts so like ben will watch him my mom and then me so it's a nice rotation and it means that Lennon always has someone that's so stoked to hang out with him because by the time it's my shift i'm like yay i get to hang out with him it's so so nice to have help I also think I'll feel more like myself when I kind of look like myself again. I don't know, am I going through this period of just detaching from my reflection? Is that strange? I just feel very neutral with my appearance and I haven't worn any of my, I haven't even tried to wear any of my pre-pregnancy clothes. I know that things just fit me different and I just look different. I've been feeling that detachment with that like fashion slash style sense of my identity. I'm not putting so much pressure on myself to try and like snap back. It's only been like a month, so I'm just being really gentle with myself. Like my diet is starting to become more regular on what I normally eat. And now I'm going to probably incorporate some light walking now that I am completely recovered, woo! But yeah, I have like full faith that I'm gonna feel like myself again pretty soon, so that I am happy about. Yeah, you're hungry. You keep sucking your hands. Luckily, we've got some of mama's milk. Yeah, that's good. It is my shift. I'm feeding the baby while Oma is whipping us up something in the kitchen. Oh yeah, good job. Yes, my pterodactyl. Eh. He's a good boy. He's our little soldier he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's our little soldier. He's going through it. He's marching in the, on. In the trenches, isn't he, boy? He is in the trenches. I'm talking a lot about how we've been having a nice system with the mm. shifts, you mm. know? Giving each other, you know, moments where it's like it's someone else's responsibility so uh, the other person can, you know, finish work or get things they need to get done. Yeah. But then it's also nice having family time, you know, yeah. where we, we all relax and all watch some TV. We don't really watch much TV mm -hmm. in general, but having little Lenny boy and Cheeky and kind of, you know, there's only so much you can do when you're feeding him. You don't really have any arms free yeah. to read or work, mm -mm. so put some, put some shows on. I think the biggest learning or the biggest lesson we've learned is to lower any expectations. Like we have to work on his schedule. So yeah. if, even for nighttime shifts, you know, if you think, oh yeah, I'll be able to get X amount of hours sleep, you could be setting yourself up for failure and then your expectations too high. So even just when, when I do the night shift sometimes with him now, I just think, right, if I get no sleep tonight, I'll accept that. You know, I have to just, you know, that's like worst case and it is what it is. Um, and then anything else is a bonus. And then usually that means you will get more sleep. Yeah, so like even if you just got 30 minutes of sleep, you're like, at least I got 30 minutes of sleep. It's always okay. No matter how tired you are, no matter how behind you are with work or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We've got this perfect little boy that's so much more important than any of that stuff, yeah, you know? Right. It makes it so worth it. Dinner's Thank you, ready. Oma. Thank you, Oma. 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 Now Oma's on shift. Been <laughs> a massive help. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Thanks, Mama. Thank you, Mama.